Hey, Brian here with DIY Outdoor Life. Today we're gonna to be talking about the fastest and easiest way to charge our camper with solar. We're talking about these all-in-one kits. They come with the panel, the charge controllers, the fusing and the cables, so that the only thing we have to do is take these panels, point them towards the sun, and plug them into our camper, and we're charging. You're not gonna be able to beat this as far as ease of use for entry-level systems. But with anything, there are some pros and cons, and we're gonna discuss those. And the most important thing is this landmine set by the industry that a lot of people are walking right into. So I'm gonna give you the tips and tricks to avoid that, spend a lot less money, and probably get some better gear too. So let's check it out. So when we buy one of these kits, we typically purchase them by the watt of the panel. This is a 100 watt kit. This is a 40 watt kit. They come with the charge controller attached to the unit itself. Everything is all set up. The only thing we need to know how to do is plug these into our camper. So the most common way to plug our all-in-one kits into our camper is through this port on the side. Now many of you, if you're fans of the channel, know that I've referred to these solar on the sides as a gimmick. I think the whole thing is pretty lousy. Now we can use these, but it's important that we know what's going on here. This solar on the side port is nothing more than an SAE plug with a wire running to our battery. If we were building a camper ourselves, this style of plug might cost us like seven or eight bucks, but we would do a better job. We would, la we would add an easy to access fuse that we can provide some upstream safety. We would probably use a better connector and we would use 10 gauge wire, pure copper something that's high quality so we can use a wide range of different solar products. These are typically 12 gauge wire with real cheap components. For that reason, although it's easy to use these, it's not the best solution. So naturally a beginner would have some questions about why this type of plug would even exist. And this is that landmine that I'm talking about. The manufacturers of the RVs get a couple bucks every time they slap a sticker on here. It'll say something like only use ZAMP panels or the world is gonna come to an end, or only use Go Power or your camper's gonna set on fire. The truth is there's nothing proprietary about this plug. It's just a simple SAE plug. There's one wire to the positive side of your battery and one wire to the negative side of your battery. And you, as you might assume, if you buy the kit that correlates with that sticker, it's way overpriced and most of the time it's just mediocre gear. So what I'm gonna teach you to do today is to be able to use this plug with any gear you want. I'm also going to show you how to go directly to the battery because you're always going to get better results that way. After using these plugs for years, I think the only real advantage of this plug is if your batteries are located inside the camper. Now you have a nice easy to use passage to get to those batteries. I'd still like to see higher quality gear, but if your batteries are located outside, we're going to handle this problem a different way. In order to be able to use this plug with any gear we want, we want to understand the polarity, which side is positive and which side is negative. It's no different than putting a AA battery in a remote. One side has to go to the plus, one side has to go to the negative. So I'm using a really inexpensive multimeter, and when I plug these in, it rounds it off to 13. It's really probably 12.9. It's the battery voltage, and I just took it off the charger. If I switch these around, the number now reads negative. When the number reads positive, the red probe is on the positive side. When the number reads negative, the red probe is on the negative side. The number says 13 and the red is on the left. That means the positive is on the left. When I swap these the other way, the number says negative 13 and the red is on the right. So the negative is on the right. 
That's how we tell the positive and negative number on our meter. For this RV with the go power orientation, the bare male prong is the red side. The female socket side is the negative. Now we can write this down, put it on a post-it note. This is never going to change. I now know which side is positive and which side is negative. Of course, they don't tell you because they're trying to encourage you to use a specific set of gear. Now, I don't want to leave anyone behind here. So I want you to realize that if you don't have a multimeter, you could buy a really inexpensive one and it's a good tool to have if you own a camper. If you don't want to do this job at all, ask a friend to come over and tell you the polarity. It takes five seconds. One side is plus, one side is negative. If you don't have any friends, go to a mechanic and give them $5 to tell you. This is gonna save us a ton of money in the long run, so we really wanna identify the polarity of our solar on the side plug. The next thing we're gonna do is check the polarity of whatever kit you purchased. You can purchase any all-in-one kit you want. And on the charge controller, it's clearly gonna tell you which side is positive and which side is negative. Some of them even come with color-coordinated wires. Now, if we're using a ZAMP kit on a Go Power, or we're using Goal Zero, or we're using a Renergy kit, or a lot of them on the market, the bare male prong is the positive side. So when I go to plug this into the camper the right way, it doesn't go in. The only way it'll fit is backwards. But this part right here costs a dollar. You can buy a kit with like three of these on Amazon for just a couple bucks. They usually give you one of these for free when you're buying a lot of these kits. Now, when I plug these in, my kit lines up and I can plug it directly into the camper. If this is the only way you're gonna use your gear, put a little bit of tape around this or put a heat shrink and now you never have to touch it again. You can use any gear you want with any orientation of your solar on the side. So now I'm gonna show you why it's so important to be able to test the polarity and use a reverse if you want to. So over here, we have one of the kits that correlate with those solar on the side stickers. This is a 40 watt ZAMP. You can also get this in a 100 watt. This one over here is a 100 watt panel. But dollar for watt hour, this kit actually costs a little bit more money than a much higher quality kit like this one from Goal Zero. You can also get a Renergy kit that is way cheaper than these ZAMP or Go Power kits and around the same quality gear. If you wanna go with a better entry level kit, there's a lot cheaper kits out there. But when you're looking at these panels side to side, this panel has a much higher quality cell for the solar. It's a higher quality panel. This one right here is not even monocrystalline. Some of the new ones are, but the price point is the same. This kit comes with a much higher quality charge controller. You can change it for lithium batteries. You can use flooded, gel, AGM. This one is a single charge controller without any capability to modify it. The quality of the wires are different. All in all, any way you look at it, you're getting a much worse kit for around the same amount of money. One of my favorite parts of this Goal Zero all-in-one kit, and one of the reasons why I recommend it, is you can unplug the charge controller and you have an eight millimeter barrel port. That means I can charge my Yeti with the same kit. And it's not just exclusive to Goal Zero. This Goal Zero solar kit will charge a Jackery. It'll charge a Blue Eddy. It'll charge any portable power station that has or can adapt to an eight millimeter barrel plug. These all-in-one kits are hardwired in. They're good for one thing. You can plug them into the solar on the side on your camper and that's it. 
This Goal Zero kit also comes with adapters. You can make your own solar on the side and wire it right to the battery. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. It also comes with these pure copper alligator clamps. So you can charge a standalone battery, or you can walk this over at the campsite and charge up your friend that uh, ran out of juice just by clamping this on the battery. It's a lot of extra features for the same amount of money. So this little adapter that comes with these all-in-one kits, the ones that aren't correlated to the stickers on the side, this just goes red to red and black to black on your battery. Now this plug just hangs through the port on the battery box. You now have a solar on the front instead of a solar on the side. This is superior for a number of reasons. With DC current, with direct current, the shorter the wire length, the less the resistance. The resistance causes the energy to drop. So with shorter wires, more energy makes it to the battery. This is a shorter wire than the solar on the side that eventually makes its way to the battery. The other way it helps is maybe you wanna put your solar out on the passenger side. Whether you go the passenger side or the driver's side, it's gonna be the same distance. You don't have to run the wire around the camper. It's a huge advantage. If you want to improve on your system even more, check out this plug from iGreely. I'll throw the link in the description as well. It's the same plug, but it's 10 gauge copper and it has a fuse holder. You install it the same way, but because it's 10 gauge, you can use up to a 30 amp setup. The solar on the side and the plug that come with these are rated up to 20 amps. So that's an added benefit. The big thing for me is it fixes one of the shortcomings of these all-in-one kits. By having a fuse back here by the battery, you're protecting everything upstream. So if somebody jams a shovel into the wire running to your charge controller, you're not gonna see fireworks. See, those kits are fused back there and that's gonna protect the equipment. But this whole wire running to your battery is not fused. I have seen problems. So being able to fuse this connector, and I think it costs 10 bucks, I highly, highly recommend this. If you wanna know what size fuse to use, go 150% of your charge controller, 1.5. 10 amp charge controller, 15 amp fuse. 20 amp charge controller, 30 amp fuse. And the fuses come with this. It's a simple automotive fuse. So it's an excellent, excellent addition to one of these systems. So I hope you found this video helpful. The idea here is to show you that you don't have to stick to the sticker. You can get any gear you want. You can spend a lot less money or get a lot better gear. The Go Power, Zamp, Fury and stuff is a little overpriced for what you're getting. The Gold Zero stuff is expensive, but you can use it for your portable power stations and your camper, and it's top of the line quality. The Renergy stuff is along the same quality of the Zamp and the Go Power for a lot less money. I'll include those kits in my description. Now I'm also gonna include some Dokio options. Dokio is just, comp I have no idea how they're selling their stuff for so cheap. It is low quality gear. Their charge controllers aren't matched to their panels. There's a lot of wonky stuff going on, but for the cost of a Harbor Freight panel, they get really high reviews. You can buy a 300 watt Dokio system for a lot less money than even a 100 watt Renergy. So I'm gonna include that in there with the caveat that it's kind of disposable gear, but it works. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Check out the Solar 101 if you wanna learn more. I'm gonna be making a lot of videos, uh, building our own systems and trying to get everybody's camper set up with the best solar possible. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.